Yeah, hello. Good good day to everyone. So my name is Dr. Yasser Bashir and I am a lecturer in the School of Physics. So today we will be learning about seismic reflection data processing. So it is based on a project which is called Tutorial A and it is for the class of Geophysics 2G015. So before we proceed to the uh, processing software we, I want to give you an introduction of seismic data acquisition then followed by seismic data processing workflows and then I will show you some of the example from the seismic data which is acquired in the field so first I will tell you about the seismic data acquisition so for the sake of simplicity we are considering on the 8 channel record which is a land survey i will show you an example over here so here you can see this is a source interval is one into picket interval and we will be using symmetric spread so in symmetric spread you have similar number of receiver both side of the source so let's say this is a surface over here and this is your reflector so source is placed in the middle of the receiver so these are four receiver on the left side and four receiver on the right side once we fire this shot so you can see the wave propagate like this and reflect back from here so this place over here which is the reflection point is called CMP common midpoint similar thing will happen because the wave divergence is spherical and every direction the wave will propagate so it will reflect from this point and similar thing will happen from all these four for for all these four receivers then what we will do we will record the common midpoint so this, these are the common midpoints number then what we will do we will move our source and receiver to the next place so over here let's move to the right then fire the shot so again the, re the recording will happen and the receiver will <coughs> the receiver will record the signals then we will pinpoint the CMP over here to calculate the fold the same thing will happen again for the third shot point fourth short point fifth and so on so over here we are showing you let me make it bigger so now we can calculate the fold so the fold is equal to 1 over 2 c is a c into delta x over delta g delta x over delta s is equal to 1 by 2 8 is our channel number of channel and 50 meter is a picket interval and again the delta x is 50 and our geophone or the source our receiver interval is 50 and source interval is also 50 so we can see the maximum fold recorded is 4 so how many time a CDP is hit by a point is called the fold so now the second is a split splat shooting with the picket interval 2 into picket it's 2 picket interval so let's say we fire the shot and this wave goes into the subsurface and hit back from the reflector and record to the receiver so we will record the common midpoint here then same thing will happen for the second shot and so on so over here you can see our source is moving from here to here so it's been the picket interval is 2 so in this case our fold is minimum so let's say this is a 2 fold data so we can calculate based on our acquisition geometry And the third type of shooting is end on shooting. So over here you can see source interval is 1 into picket interval 
and it is asymmetric spread or volume so from let's say if you have a transaction zone like in the C side or it's a boundary condition that you cannot acquire the survey on the other side of so then we have to start from here so then once we move our source here then we will put a receiver here and the same thing will happen on the right side so once we finish our survey from this side then we will remove our receiver from here and our shooting will be here in this case our fold is maximum so over here you can see the this is four fold data so in the split spread shooting it's a symmetric spread, it's a four-fold data. In end and shorting, it's a asymmetric spread is also four-fold data. But here you can see your maximum taper zone or taper zone is smaller than in this area. So the no fold area is more than here. So we prefer this type of survey. So just the example of picket interval and geophone interval, source interval. So you can see this is a receiver interval. We can calculate this is by source interval, which is two into receiver interval, and the picket interval is normally it is called the receiver interval. And another thing I want to tell you, the CDP interval is half of the picket interval, CMP interval. So another thing, picket number, which is called the receiver number. And CDP number is equal to picket interval into two. Normally we assign this CDP number double than the picket interval. So first CDP number is equal to 2 into uh, RP plus SP minus RP1. So this was all about the uh, data acquisition. So we learn about three type of survey, which is split spread and on shooting and asymmetric spread. So now we will move in, into the seismic data processing so in seismic data processing we have the mechanical processes and seismic data forms and the second process is called the interactive process and third one is the basic processing flow and another thing we will discuss about the detailed processing workflows so in mechanical processes we have no change in the amplitude frequency or phase of the data so the mechanical process is include demultiplex which is from the multiplex data to demultiplex we change from the short order to trace order data and then we sort our data then we stack so in this case we don't we are not uh, we are not changing any amplitude and phase frequencies so in as i mentioned the multiplex data is in the short number or the tree sequential data so we have recorded our data in this form each point is assigned by the source and receiver but now demultiplex or we have to change into tree sequential data from row into column so like this we will change our data from uh, row into column which is a trace sequential data Or you can call we can take a transpose of the data so the, this is our distance and this is our time then if we talk about common depth family of CDP order data so before we do the stacking we have to do the NMO correction so this is you can see the move out is like this 
once we stack our seismic section before we apply the end correction or then we do the stacking so this all data will be stacked into one trace so this second one is a interactive process in which what we are doing we we doing the trace editing i will show you in the software what we are going to do so bad trace smooth polarity reversal and kill record then we will be doing the first break picking which is essential for static correction then uh, third thing that we are doing going to do is a velocity picking it's called nmo correction normal move out or dynamic correction as well so let's compare with the interactive and mechanical processes so we have two type of processes as we discussed mechanical and interactive process so in mechanical processes which is highlighted with this green triangle so demultiplex sort and stack is mechanical process but if we talk about the, the uh, interactive process which is a geometry quality control editing and static correction normal move out or in this flow uh, it's called the interactive processes so let's talk about these simplified processing flow chart so as i mentioned the data recorded in the field is a short order data then we do the demultiplexing and short order data we will change into trace trace sequential trace sequential data then we define the geometry we do the editing of the traces and based on the geometric spreading there's a lot of filter we can apply which is called the notch filter notch, for, notch filter is usually used for certain band of frequency and then we can also apply the band pass filter and apply the deconvolution operator and deconvolution operator is used in order to enhance signal to noise ratio and then we sort our data in this uh, we also from the geometry we do the subsampling and first break picking for reflection starting and that reflection static can be updated in the data before applying the NMO correction so after NMO correction we can do stacking that is the output of the raw stack over here and also from the static correction and then we have the CVA which is during the velocity picking and velocity picking can be done can be resulted from the uh, normal move out then we can do the stacking which is called the root stack then also what we can do is from before boot stack we can we can go to the residual static update and also the input from the velocity picking we can do the nmo correction then we do the final stack then final stack will go for migration and final migration will be done for migratory stack sorry Okay, now we move on to the short gather data and also called the short record or the field monitor data. So I will show you some of the examples from the short gather data which is recorded in the field. So just to get the experience how the data look like. So this is the first example of the data which is recorded in the field. So here you can see lot of noises, refraction, reflections, head waves, ground rolls, ear waves. So these are normally uh, your noise. This is ground rolls, ear waves. But these prominent reflection is from interpreted sediment. And this is water table or head waves. And this one sharp reflection can be associated with volcanic sedimentary interbedded rocks and this is the second example with the short 
here and receiver on the both, both side so over here you can see airways ground rules here airways reflection this on reflection and this is the first spring and this is mostly the noise area over here and here you can see the frequency content of the shot so here is a low frequency you see the seismic waves or the amplitude is quite high and normally the noise is a very high frequency noise so here you can see the vehicles are very close Uh, here is one of the section which is together with a lot of noises so over here you can see this part is a noise this one over here and also here so this is quite difficult to interpret but before we going to do the interpretation or processing we have we we need to take this challenge to remove the noise first then do the processing Still we can see the reflection here, this is the first break, this reflection, airway, ground roll. So first driver, reflection, ground roll. So as I mentioned, after the processing you can see uh, noise removal, first break is very clear, first travel, then reflection and the ground roll. This is before. So this is a short gather data with the add-on shooting. So we, this is with the add-on shooting which we are talking about. So you can see the sources on this corner and receiver is here. So our survey is moving like this. So this is split, split spread shooting. Or here you can see quite good data. And this one is uh, split spread in one phase of the shot. So over here you can see these traces are quite unusual or unexpected. So during the editing of during the seismic data processing, we can edit this trace or we can kill the trace because this is because of the noise or some other or incoherent noise. So after the killing or editing we can remove these traces and replace with the beside traces. And also with this we can remove this type of event by muting this part. This is called the EOS. And also we can remove from the top or base top mute, base mute and surgical mute as well. So this is CDP gather data before animal correction you see the move out of the reflection but after the animal correction the move out CDP gather can be seen and the move out is correct. So this, this was the first part of the presentation and so we have some idea about the seismic data acquisition, what type of acquisition we are using in the field and the general and very simplified seismic data processing workflow we have seen and some of the example for the seismic data processing such as muting, signal to noise recovery and also some part trace editing we have learned about that and some of the data example I have shown you from the spread spread geometry and as well as from the and on shooting geometry so after this we will move on move into using the software which is a seismic data processing software so in the folder which is provided to you is is a called uh, processing software and in which you can see and run the software and you can follow my second video uh, for using the software.